Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about perennial clover plots and everything that you need to know to put one in and also maintain it on your property. It is about mid-June right now, and this particular plot was planted in the fall of last year, the fall of 2020. And you can see we have a pretty good stand of clover here. There's a, a few grasses coming in and, and a few broadleaf weeds, but for the most part, this is a pretty pure stand of perennial clover. But right off the bat, what are a few reasons that you might wanna put in a clover plot on your property? Uh, first, clover is very browse tolerant. So if your property is in an area with very high deer numbers, or, or maybe you, you are gonna be creating smaller plots because you have a smaller property, clover is a great option. You can't really plant brassicas uh, in, a, in a small plot, especially if you have high deer numbers. A lot of times the deer will just eat it down to the dirt. Same thing with soybeans. This is where clover comes in and it, and it makes a great option for a food plot. Another reason why you might wanna consider planting clover on your property is because it grows late into the season and it's one of the first things to green up in the spring. Now, it, it does not grow as late into the season as cereal rye and it doesn't green up as fast as cereal rye. But here on our Michigan properties, it does grow throughout October and into early November. And depending on the type of weather you have in November, it could grow fairly well in November as well. Last year, the 2020 season, we had an extremely warm rut. I'd, I don't know if it was warm everywhere around the country, but here in Michigan, it was extremely warm. I remember hunting in shorts and a t-shirt uh, on, on one of those nights and our clover grew well throughout November and into early December. So every year is gonna be a little bit different, but again, a clover stand will be attractive for a good portion of the season. Another reason why you might wanna start thinking about clover on your property, and it's one of the main reasons why I love these small clover plots, is clover is very low maintenance. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a perennial, and for those of you guys that have ever tried to get it out of your yard, it, it's really tough to do without chemicals, and it's pretty easy to establish a pretty pure stand of clover as long as you're putting in the plot the correct way. Besides mowing a few times a year and maybe applying a selective herbicide depending on the grass situation, the broadleaf weeds, clover is pretty low maintenance. I don't really spend a whole lot of time uh, working on these food plots once they're already established. So if a clover plot is something that you're thinking about putting in on your property either this season or a future season, what are the steps that you need to take in order to have a successful clover plot? Well, well, the first thing that you need to do with any food plot, and, and a clover plot is no different, is getting a soil test. When, whenever we have a, a location picked out for a food plot, we get a soil test. You need to make sure that you amend the soil uh, with clover, just like with any other food plot. Uh, cl most clovers do well anything from you know, 6.5 to 7 pH. So depending on how that soil test comes back, you know, some people are gonna have to apply more lime than others, but make sure that you're bringing your pH to about 6.5 to 7.0. That's where clover really thrives and is able to absorb the maximum amount of nutrients from your soil. Your soil test results will come back with more than just your soil's pH. It'll have the amount of trace minerals in your soil. It'll have the amount of organic matter you know, within your soil. And you can work on improving those over time, but what you really wanna focus on right away is making sure that your pH is right around 6.5 to seven. Once you've gotten your soil test back and you've started to amend your soil, the next thing you need to do is make sure that your plot is getting enough sunlight. There's a lot of people out there that'll say clover is very shade tolerant and depending on the variety, it can be, but clover does much better with full sunlight. So again, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult for some of you as opposed to others, and it really just depends on where you're gonna be putting in this plot. If you're putting it in, let's say, in an existing field or existing opening within the timber, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you as you're not gonna have to remove trees. But if you are gonna be creating an in-the-woods plot, a kill plot, a passer plot, you know, a small staging plot, you're most likely going to have to take down trees within the woods, block them up, and get them out of there. If your clover plot doesn't get enough sunlight, it's never gonna reach its maximum potential. And, and to give you guys uh, some perspective on this, this particular plot, I would say gets full sun from about 10.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night, it's getting sunlight. And that is a little bit more than most of our small plots on our properties, but we do try our best to get full sunlight to all of our food plots, and clover plots are no exception. 
So now that you've started amending the soil and you feel like your new food plot is getting enough sunlight, now it's time to prepare the seed bed. And we're gonna be talking about three different ways you can do that. Uh, two of them will be no-till options and then one will be uh, a light disking. When preparing your seed bed for any food plot, and clover is no exception, you wanna make sure you're gonna be getting good seed to soil contact and you're not gonna be having a whole lot of weed competition. So there's three ways you can achieve this fairly easily. And the first one we're gonna talk about is by disking the soil. If you're somebody who is not comfortable using herbicide and you have access to a disc, uh, all you need to do is disk the soil a few times throughout the summer. When you disk the ground over and over again, you're gonna be breaking the root system of the existing vegetation and that's gonna kill it for a short period of time. Now, the weeds will grow back and that's why you have to disk it again later in the summer. So if you disk your new plot in late May and again in late June and one final time in late July, you'd be coming into planting with a pretty good seed bed. Now, if you are going to use this method in order to plant your clover plot, make sure that you are packing the soil down after you disc up the plot. And the, the reason you wanna do that is because clover is a very small seed and that seed can't fall too deep within the soil. When you disc up the plot, you're going to be loosening up the soil and it, if your clover plot falls into that loose soil, it's gonna germinate, but it's gonna be buried too deep to emerge from the soil. A good practice or a good process to follow when disking the soil to prepare your seed bed is to disc, then cultipack or use a lawn roller or use your ATV tires to pack the soil down, then spread your seed and then pack the soil again with your cultipacker, your lawn roller or your ATV tires. This is gonna firm up the seed bed and then it's also going to press that seed down into your soil after you have seeded it. The next two options to prepare your seed bed, and you can use this for any food plot, not just clover plots, are, are no-till options. And these are becoming more and more popular every single year. The first one we're gonna talk about uh, involves chemicals. So again, the goal is to come into a weed-free seed bed in the fall with exposed soil. And we can accomplish this with herbicide. And in order to do this, just like with the disking method, you're gonna to have to set aside about three days in order to work on your plot. And it's right around the same time as well, about late May, late June, and late July. And what you wanna do around mid to late May when your weeds are starting to grow out of control is spray your plot with glyphosate in 2,4-D. Glyphosate is just generic Roundup and 2,4-D is broadleaf weed killer. And the combination of the two of those will pretty much get rid of anything in the way of your new plot. So again, sometime in mid to late May, depending on where you are, when those weeds are really growing aggressively, anywhere from six to eight inches, you want to hit the plot with glyphosate in 2,4-D. That should kill off pretty much everything that it touches, but in about a month, you're gonna have a new round of grasses and a new round of weeds that need to be addressed. So then hit it with the same combination, glyphosate and 2,4-D. And again, that's gonna be about a month after your initial spraying, so mid to late June. Now with your final spraying, which will again be about a month after your second spraying, so mid-July to late July, you wanna drop the 2,4-D out of the herbicide application and only hit the plot with glyphosate. And the reason that you're doing that is because there's a residual effect with 2,4-D, meaning that it stays in your soil for a few weeks. And so if you were to spray your plot and then plant the same day or plant a few days later, if it's a clover seed, that clover seed is gonna germinate, but it's going to die because the 2,4-D is still in the soil. But if you're someone that wanted to use this method to prepare your seed bed, it's pretty easy and I can almost guarantee you that you're gonna come into a weed-free exposed soil seed bed. The final way to prepare your seed bed that we're gonna be talking about in this video is also a no-till method and it involves planting a cover crop of buckwheat throughout the summer. If you had previously planted an annual crop in last year's food plot, maybe you planted brassicas, maybe you planted cereal grains, you're gonna have a great opportunity to plant buckwheat as a summer cover crop without having to disturb the soil. Last year's annual food plot that you planted in August will come back in the spring. And depending on where you are, it's gonna be a little bit different. But here in Michigan, right around the first week in June is when you wanna be broadcasting your buckwheat into last year's food plot. And then you wanna smash it down with either a cultipacker, a lawn roller, you wanna run it over with your ATV. Some guys use the bucket of their tractor to just lay it down. And then you wanna come over it with a spraying of glyphosate. Not glyphosate in 2,4-D, just spray it with glyphosate. Again, remember 2,4-D has a residual effect in the soil, so you just wanna be using glyphosate when you're terminating last year's crop. 
Those buckwheat seeds will be underneath that mulch layer. They're gonna germinate and break through that mulch layer. And then you're gonna be left with a relatively low maintenance summer cover crop of buckwheat. Again, the nice thing about buckwheat is it is relatively low maintenance, but one thing you wanna make sure you're watching out for is you're not letting your buckwheat go to seed. So right around seven to eight weeks, whenever you're going to be getting the, the nearest rain, you wanna be terminating your buckwheat. But before you do that, you wanna be seeding into that stand of buckwheat and then smashing it down again with your cultipacker, with your lawn roller, with your ATV tires, however you can get that stuff down you can get it down. And again, it isn't a bad idea once you've laid your buckwheat down to hit it with glyphosate just to make sure that it is terminated. The buckwheat that you lay down will protect those young clover seeds as they germinate and send that tap root down. And that buckwheat will break down very quickly and you're gonna be left with a pretty good looking food plot and you never had to break ground on the soil. So those are three different ways to prepare a seed bed. But what if you're someone who's creating a new plot within the woods? That's a little bit different than starting out with an area like this that, that's more open, that's gonna have more vegetation, more weeds that you have to take care of. When you are creating those in the woods plots, there's a lot of times just leaves on the ground or, or logs. What do you do in that situation? Well, it's no different. You wanna come in with a weed-free, exposed soil seed bed. So again, it's not gonna be necessarily more work, it's gonna be different work. You want to expose the soil. So any way that you can do that, whether that's with a leaf blower, blowing all the leaves off your plot, getting a tarp, raking all the leaves onto a tarp and hauling it off. You wanna make sure you're getting all the branches, all the sticks, all the logs off your plot. With those brand new poor man plots or plots within the timber, it's no different. You wanna make sure that you're having exposed soil so you have great seed to soil contact. Now that we have our seed bed prepared, let's talk about actually planting our clover plot. Like I mentioned earlier, clover is a very small seed, so you don't wanna let that clover seed fall any more than about a quarter inch into the soil. That mainly pertains to those guys that are gonna be disking the soil. You wanna make sure that that clover seed is not getting too deep because it only has so much energy in the seed and it's not gonna be able to escape the soil when it's buried down a half inch to an inch deep. I know we talked about it earlier, but I did wanna say it again since we are talking about actually seeding the plot. Uh, if you are using the disking method, make sure that you disk, then pack, then seed, then pack again. Again, you're packing the initial time to firm up that seed bed so those clover seeds don't get lost in the soil. And you're packing again at the end to, to, just to press those seeds into the soil. If you're using the herbicide approach, you really don't need to do much besides broadcasting your clover seeds into that dead thatch just before a rain. And again, if you're using the buckwheat method, all you need to do is seed into the standing buckwheat, smash the buckwheat down, and then spray the buckwheat with glyphosate. Another thing you wanna make sure you're watching out for, and this is gonna be crucial for the success of your plot, and that's making sure that you're planting before some sort of a rain event. Uh, you, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be getting a good soaking. You don't really wanna have a chance at a quarter of an inch and you're gonna be seeding before that. I, I know depending on how far away your property is, sometimes you have to seed when you have to seed, and, and I understand that, but when possible, try to make sure that you're seeding before a pretty significant rain event. You want those seeds to get pounded into the ground, you want that food plot to get a pretty good soaking. Another thing I wanna talk about in this video is when to plant your clover plot. I see a lot of guys planting in the spring, and I see a lot of guys planting in the fall, and, and I'm not gonna say if you plant in the spring that you're doing it wrong, I just prefer to plant in the fall, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, one of the main reasons why is because, again, you wanna come into a weed-free seed bed. Otherwise, you're gonna be battling weeds throughout the life of this food plot, so it's best just to take care of your weeds up front, and then you're not gonna be dealing with them for years to come. Uh, the, the second reason why is because your clover is gonna get two growing seasons in before that following summer. Clover doesn't always do the best in, in, in drought-like situations. It, it'll get stressed out. That doesn't always mean your plot's gonna dry out and die. But if you can get a fall growing season along with a spring growing season, that clover is gonna be much stronger and much healthier going into its first summer. This year in Southwest Michigan, we're going through a pretty significant drought. We haven't gotten hardly any rain. But as you can see behind me, this particular clover plot is doing pretty well. I can't say the same about my grass. My grass is yellow and dying, but my clover plot, doing pretty good. And that's because we planted it in the fall and it had two growing seasons to prepare for this hot, dry summer. 
planting a perennial clover plot in the fall does have disadvantages, mainly that it's not going to look like this in the fall. It's gonna be a lot shorter. And the reason is because perennial clover wants to grow down before it grows up, meaning it wants to work on its root system before it starts putting on a lot of growth above ground. That doesn't mean that it's not a draw to the deer herd, it absolutely is. But because it's much shorter, you're gonna run the risk of those deer nipping at the clover and they, they could actually wipe out your perennial clover plot before it gets established. So that's why with a lot of these perennial clovers, if you are planting in the fall, you wanna also be planting what's called a nurse crop along with it. And there's really no better nurse crop than planting grains alongside your clover, whether you're gonna throw down oats, winter wheat, or cereal rye, all of those can get the job done as providing a nurse crop for your clover. And what that means is as your clover is working on getting established, those annual crops are putting on growth above ground and that's what the local deer herd is targeting as opposed to your young clover. If you do decide to plant a nurse crop alongside your clover, that will come back in the spring. And just like we talked about earlier, you are going to have to address it and it's gonna depend on where you live. But here in Michigan, it's right around early June to late May. And that kind of brings us into clover maintenance. And again, one of the reasons why I love clover for these small food plots. And as far as maintenance goes, there's really only two things that I do to maintain these clover plots. Uh, the first thing I do is I'll mow a few times throughout the year. And the second thing I do is I will spray selective herbicide to control the grasses and the broadleaf weeds within the clover plot. Before you fire up your lawnmower and you head out to your clover plot, there are a couple things that you want to make sure you, that you are watching out for before you mow your clover plot. Uh, the first thing is you want to make sure that there is some sort of a rain event in the future. Like I said earlier, we're going through a pretty nasty drought so far this summer. I was actually able to mow this clover plot down one time towards the end of May. We had a stretch of about three days that looked like we were gonna be getting a decent amount of rain. We ended up only getting about a half of an inch, but that was enough for this clover plot to kind of rebound from that mowing after I terminated the cereal rye that was in this plot. Before you mow, there's a couple things you wanna watch out for. The first is that you wanna to try to look to see if right about half of your clover plot is starting to flower. As you can see in this plot, I got maybe about 15 to 20% of the plot is flowering. So I, I would not even consider mowing this plot uh, until at least half of the plot is starting to flower. And then also, I would not mow unless I had some sort of a rain event that was pretty much guaranteed you know, immediately following when I was going to mow. So even if this plot was flowering 100%, I probably still would not mow the plot if I didn't have some sort of a rain event in the future. Rain is more important to me than whether or not the entire plot is flowering. Another thing you wanna make sure you're watching out for when you are mowing your clover is that you're not mowing it too short. You don't really wanna be cutting clover much shorter than six to eight inches. It just really stresses out the plant. And I know that's not gonna be possible for everyone, including myself. I do not have a mower that cuts at six inches. The, the highest my mower goes is four inches. So everything that you see here, was cut at four inches. And I do know that that's not recommended, but you also have to work with what you have. And I have a four inch mowing deck, so my clover plots get mowed at four inches. And when it comes to treating my clover plot for grasses and broadleaf weeds, I use two different selective herbicides. For the broadleaf weeds, I use a herbicide called 2,4-DB or Butyrac 200 that is safe for clover, not on chicory, uh, but it, it will not harm your clover as long as you're reading the label and you're following the instructions on the label. So that should kill most of the broadleaf weeds within your clover plot and again, not harm your clover. To control the grasses within my clover plot, I use a herbicide called clethodim along with a crop or seed oil. And what that does, it just helps the clethodim stick to the grass so the grass can absorb it. And I will say that with the 2,4-DB or the Butyrac 200, you can see that working within two to three days after applying, but it does take a few weeks for the grasses to start to die off after applying the clethodim. And if you guys are planning on putting in a clover plot on your property, another thing that I would recommend doing is not planting a single type of clover within your plot, but instead plant a variety of clovers. And there's a few reasons why you wanna be planting a variety of clover within your clover plot. One, deer love diversity. So make your food plot more attractive and give them what they want. Different types of clover perform better in different environments. For example, some clovers are more drought tolerant, while other clovers perform better in wetter soil. 
Planting a variety of clover not only gives the deer what they want, but it also gives your food plot a better chance at success. The food plots that we have planted in clover on our properties, we have three different varieties of clover within those plots. And I'm not saying that these are the best three varieties out there. These are just the three that we feel work the best for our plots. And those are Ladino, Elsike, and Dutch clover. Again, each one of those clovers perform better in a different environment and deer like all of them. So give your food plot a better chance at success and make sure to plant a variety of clover. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up for both planting and maintaining a clover plot on your property. I know this is a longer video, but I tried to make it a little bit longer to cover as much as I could to hopefully answer as many questions as I could. If you do have any additional questions on clover plots or food plots in general, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.